Hello and welcome to another Monroe walking guide. In today's video I'm going to walk the Ben Jerig circuit. This is another four Monroe walk and a bit longer than last week's. The starting point is 7 miles south of Allapool on the A835. The car park fits around 15 cars and it is only suitable for cars or small vans under 2 metres tall and I'll show and talk more about that in the video. The total distance for today's walk is a little under 27 kilometres with around 1600 metres of ascent and it is expected to take around 9 hours to walk. It is possible to cycle the first 3.5 kilometres and that's 156 metres of ascent on a good forestry hard gravel road. It would be nice to coast back down to the car park at the end of the walk on that road. On the day I was originally planning to do a different Monroe until the weather forecast changed at the last minute and as I was going up for two days walking I decided to go somewhere where the weather forecast was to be good. And this is also the first time that I've climbed the Ben Jerig circuit. The car park itself is around four hours drive from either Glasgow or Edinburgh. The closest public toilet on the way to the car park is the Blackwater Falls which is around 30 minutes south of the car park. Once again I've included links in the description to the route on OS Maps and the parking on Google Maps. So from the car park here you leave the car park and turn left and go up this track. You'll go through a gate at this point here and follow the forestry road ignoring this turn off to the left here. Keep going straight ahead and then when you come to this point ignore these two turns here. Again you're going straight ahead but you're keeping to the left this time. The road will naturally bend to the left and go over a bridge and then it'll bend back to the right. Ignore this junction to the left and then keep following that straight on. At this point here you'll go through a gate and that marks three and a half kilometres as you leave the forest. The path changes here because up to this point it's a drivable gravel road and now it turns into just a walking path and it goes up the side here and it's increasing in altitude, it's a fairly steady climb all the way up. You'll come to this point here, you'll see a small cairn and this is where you join the path on the return. Keep following the path, it's fairly clear. There are a couple of branches off this path but they all end up in the same place. So you just keep going up here, following this stream and keep working your way up. There's a larger pool of water here. You go around that. I think there's a little island on that as well. I'll show that in the video. And then you climb up. It gets a little bit steeper at this point and you keep climbing all the way up. At this point here, you'll have covered around about 10 kilometers. And it's from here that you go up and to your right to do Ben Jerig itself. And this is quite a steep and fairly rocky with big steps. There's no real scrambling, but it is quite a steep rocky ascent. In my video, I actually went further on and joined the path because there's a wall here. So I joined it around about here in the video. On the way back down, I did see the path go off earlier that I had missed on the way up. But you go all the way up to the top. There's a wall. There's a wall. Yeah, there's the wall there, you can see it on the map. So you come up to the corner of that wall and it's in the corner of the wall that you'll cross over the wall and go all the way up. Now an alternative route to the way I went, which would be quite easy, is at some point further back down here, just after leaving the woods, you could cross over and make your way up. There's no path to, to follow, but if you made your way up this hillside here, you would come onto the top and then there's that wall, the wall that you see later on. It runs the whole way along, so you could easily follow the wall. Yeah, so I think the, the wall starts at this point here. That white line of snow is where the snow is gathered against the wall. And you can easily follow that wall all the way virtually to the summit. You can see here that you just keep going straight on it, it takes you straight to the summit as the wall bends down there. So from the summit of Ben Jerig, you re retrace your steps back down. Again, you're following the wall. The wall actually ends at this little lock-in right here. So you follow the wall and then from there there's a clear path that goes down the side here and then starts going up. There were various routes up into Coma Vial. As you're going up here, you just follow the path and aim for the highest point. I went a little bit further to the north, northeast, just to get some nice views. 
and again you retrace your steps. On the way down I found it more difficult to follow the path and I, I followed a path, it wasn't the same when I went up. But you can see when it, without any cloud as it was on the day I was there, you can see the path clearly down here. So you just head down to that point or directly west from the top basically. Retrace your steps back round to this little lock-in and from the lock-in you go back to the cairn that's at the top at this other lock-in. So at this point you return to here. And then from here you're going to head following the path pretty much north. There's a big flat cairn that you want to look out for and you'll see it in the video and at that point you turn left. The path is a little bit unclear at this section. It's a bit vague. I think it's a little bit boggy as well, so there's not a distinct eroded path at this point. But you can see signs of a path now and then, as long as you're going up the edge on the top of this um, steep side to the mountain here. As long as you're going up the top edge there, follow that. Once it gets a bit higher up, the path becomes more clear, and then you'll make your way to the summit of Mial Nan Keprikan here. From there, again, you're going to head north, and it's very indistinct, the path. It's very rocky terrain and sometimes there are signs of wear and more of a path to follow and other times it's, there's not much to see. So you just kind of head north and then you'll come to a point here where you want to bend. I was using the GPS, it, it is quite a featureless flat surface so you'll bend a little bit to the right so you head heading northeast and then again you're going to head even further towards the east. And this bit, it just dips a bit between these two tops and as it starts to sort of flatten off, I actually walked a bit further past, I walked to about here and then I spotted the cairn so I returned back. Again the path is fairly nondescript as you make your way down here and then further down you'll see a clearer signs of where, where people have walked. But you're heading in this general direction, sort of northeast or north northeast and then as you get further down you'll see that the top, this is rising all the way up here and it flattens off and then it goes down a little bit here so this is the high point and that's once you get closer to that it's quite easy to see and then you can follow that cross over the high point you will see this path it's quite um, eroded into the hillside and when you come to that path just cross straight over going straight ahead is quite boggy and again there's not a clear route but you want to be heading north northwest at this point and then once you get a little bit further up there are more signs of a path and it was actually quite easy to follow from there all the way up to the top the hardest point was at the top there was three different cairns in different maps, the OS maps and the Garmin maps. They kind of showed the top at different points. So I visited all three cairns. The first cairn was the biggest cairn. I don't know if you can see it in the satellite. Yeah, so you can see there's there's a cairn, I think, there. And there was another cairn further on. I think this might be the actual top. Um, but there was definitely a second cairn here and there was even a third cairn about here. And that top is Ad and Quack and Kela, which I think is the most difficult Monroe I've had to pronounce in this series so far. Now again, on my walk, I didn't quite come off this top at the right place. The key thing you're aiming for is this trail down here. Once you get on that, it's quite easy to follow. I think I came down just a little bit, like more directly south. That's kind of going more west than south. I think I came down a little bit here, there was a clear path to follow and I came down that and then it kind of faded away and then from there I just worked my way around the hillside, not on any path, just worked my way around until I came across the path that comes down here and even that was quite faint. There is a cairn at the bottom here I think if I recall correctly but that path is quite clear and obvious from a distance as long as you're not in cloud you can see that path. And it's, I don't think it's too steep. There were people behind me that just came straight down this bit here, down to the path. So keep keep away from these crags over here. Yeah. As long as you're heading a, a southwesterly direction, you'll make your way down. It's not too steep. There are sections, as it shows, that are a little bit steeper, but you obviously just want to walk around them and make your way down to the path. Once you're back on that path, it's very clear and straightforward. You just follow that all the way back out. You'll join up with the original path and from there you'll head west all the way back to the car park. Good morning. 7.30 in the morning, a Saturday morning. I'm at the start of the walk for the Ben Jerig circuit of Four Monroes. Unfortunately, my van can't fit in the car park. I 
hope nobody's going to get upset when they're parking at the side of the road there. So here's the Walker's car park. And it's just off the main road when you go to Alapool. And we're not far from Alapool here. But as you can see, the height limit on the car park is 2.1 metres. And my van's 2.2 metres. And I think probably a little bit more with the roof rack. I'm parked well off the road, so hopefully nobody gets upset. The midges are quite fierce, especially outside the van where I've had my breakfast. So we head along to the end of the Walker's car park and we're going to turn up to the left, just beyond that red telephone box. 27 kilometer walk, quite a bit longer than last week. Oh, I'm still getting eaten by the midges. A little stile in the corner here. Cross over that. And then I'll check my map. So once you cross the stile, you're going to head up and try and get past this gate. I think we're going to have to just climb over it. it doesn't look like it's going to open. And follow the road. So just straight on at this gate. We keep going straight ahead, keeping to the right of this junction. Once again, we continue straight on, so keeping to the left at this junction. There's another side track off to the left, we continue straight ahead. A red squirrel just darted across the road and climbed up that tree there. There you go. Nice to find it. It's not moving very much. The path ahead is actually on the left of that side. Looked on the map like it was quite straight ahead, but it's just a little bit over to the left. Just looking back down the valley, the van's parked at the very centre of the frame beyond the forest. Heading up into the clouds once again. The sun's just popping out.
path has started to level off a little bit. There's a nice waterfall down there. The clouds lifting slowly. I think the best weather is meant to be around about 10 or 11 o'clock. It's about 8.30. Not quite. A little bit further on, we'll see the down the return path on the left. It's about four kilometers from here to the summit of Ben Jerig, which is up on the right in the clouds at the moment. This little cairn marks where the descent path joins the main path. Obviously it depends which way you want to go, clockwise or anti-clockwise. I'm going to go in a clockwise direction. No real reason for that. I think it's much the same either way. I'll head on straight at this point. The cloud is continuing to rise. Looks like it might be a nice day. I deliberately picked this area for the walk and I changed my plans two or three times as the weather forecast evolved. So this was meant to be the best area, at least with mountains, for weather today. And it allowed me to book the Kinloch U caravan campsite, which is quite close by. Stay there tonight and do something on the way home tomorrow. Just going to cross this little stream that's coming down from the left and go up, keeping to the left of that little waterfall there. And we're going all the way up this valley on the right, up to the centre of the screen. And a little bit round the corner up there, we'll turn off to the right and go up to the top. Relatively calm so far. Quite a nice effect on the mountain there. This looks like a good spot for a wild camp. The water's slower moving less noise. I was tempted to go straight up there. It looks a little bit steep at the top. It would have allowed me to walk along the ridge. There's a bee lack straight ahead. It was visible a moment ago, but the clouds come back in a little bit. Heading up to that point. And I think the fourth Monroe is up there in the distance. Blue sky and sunshine coming out. Just stop for a drink and something to eat. Now I know why the pictures get a bit fogged up at times in the GoPro. Looks like changing the battery in a damp condition has let some moisture inside the actual camera. So I'll need to try the old rice trick. Let's see if I can get it to dry up. It's turning into a very nice day. There's a perfect little island to camp on. There's a little walkway to get to it. It's 
getting a bit colder and a bit windier as we approach the Vila. It's not, it's out of the sun, it's in the shade. It's a bit cool. Pretty much going straight up there. Fortunately, there's an easy way round to the left here, then up and round to the right. But we're going up the top of that. Yeah, some nice views. Let's hope the cloud keeps lifting. First view of Ancello, <laughs> and I was tempted to climb that one today, especially that section from Lord Berkeley's seat over those pinnacles there. I've done that one once before, and it was a glorious sunny day in summer. I don't know what it would be like if it was wet, and there's meant to be some rain and fog on that this morning. It really has cleared up now. Yeah, I'm going to keep that one for a really nice day. I've made it up to the b -lach, and it's at this point that the path splits. You can actually see pretty much three of them in rows from here. There's a little tiny cairn here. We're going to come back to this point after we climb the first two Monroes. But at this point I need to go, well it's kind of straight on but to the right. You see the little lock in I mentioned. Another little cairn. And the path goes this way a little bit until we get to that ridge there. And then we're going to go up that ridge. And I think it pretty much follows the, the stone dyke wall that's up there until we get up to the summit. You retrace your steps back down and then we're going to go up. I think you can see the cairn at the second top over there. Once again, you retrace your steps all the way back to here. Join that path just there. And go off and up to the third top. And then there's a bit of a walk out to the fourth outlier. And then back round and down onto the path. Still a fair bit to go. Just checked my distance from the car park. It's almost exactly 10 kilometers. Just very slightly, 100 meters less. I'm at 850 metres of altitude. The summit of Ben Jarig is at 1,070 metres. 220 metres of altitude to climb. Just went past a couple of little cairns. path gets quite difficult to follow because of all the rocks. It looks like you just head to that stone dyke wall and I expect the path just runs up the side of that wall. And it just basically goes all the way up there. There's another little cairn. So you can see the path goes up the side of the, the wall there. We'll follow that up. I'm going to have a quick look over here. Looks like there's some nice views.
the mountain starts to flatten off and the stone dike wall it bends to the right we're going to cross at the corner here you can see a cairn in the right direction and it's only 200 meters distance to the summit so it should just be a little bit beyond that cairn that i can see from here So that's me just approaching the summit of Ben Jerag. Nice big cairn in this one. Walk along to the end there, see if we get a better view of Mancella. Looks like the cloud is just clearing from the view. Yeah, so some stunning views up here. This is the first time I've done this Monroe, so it's nice to get a new Monroe in. just now as you can probably hear and the wind was going to be quite breezy up in the chill. Yeah, some of it is quite to get down off the very top of the ridge out of the wind. So a couple of Monroe's directly ahead. But the second top of the day is just over there in the centre of the frame. Not quite as high as this one. This is apparently the highest Monroe from here north in Scotland. There are no higher Monroes. It's not that many Monroes to be honest. Ben Morassent, Ben Claybrook. There's another one, I forgot his name. Next Monroe, Coma Vial, over there. I estimate that when I get to the top of that, it's probably about halfway around the walk. Certainly, there'll be less altitude to climb from there on out, but distance wise, it's probably about the halfway mark. Then go up onto that top there and round the ridge, and it bends and goes down and goes up the other side. And Background. I hope it isn't that when it's in the sunshine, but it may well be. That's quite a long way. I just keep plodding on. see from the time lapse there I've come down a slightly different route there is a path that goes around and then up 
personally I think going up the Stone Dyke wall is easier to navigate. There was some big steps, but there was no climbing involved. But coming down that way was quite easy as well. A little bit more loose mud and scree. Anyway, back to this, this wall, head down to the left, follow the wall, and then we'll try and pick up on the path again that was on earlier, which we'll cut across, and then you basically just go straight up to the summit. Up there. Looking at the map, it looks like the path goes to the right of that little lock-in, and then down where that darker bit of cliff is. I think it goes down underneath that and then works its way along to that puddle you can see there. And then you can see the tracks going up through the hillside and then it's just straight up. And then retrace your steps back that way until we get over there. Three people on the summit up there. I was following the path there, but I'm going the wrong way slightly. I do want to keep next to the stone dike wall and go across the right hand side of that little lock in. So, the detail in the Garmin map wasn't that clear, but the OS maps show us the lock in, so it's easier to see where to go on that map. So I'm just going to cut back across here slightly and follow the wall. It's a lot windier having come round the side of the mountain there. Nice views. So there's a clear path to follow here. It works its way along. So I walk along till I'm up at the top of that one there. I think I'll stop and have something to eat. It's time to change the battery and the GoPro. It's a little bit less windy, still a breeze about. Stunning views. Almost at the summit. At the summit of Coma Vial. And it's not too windy here. And obviously it will become very windy because I said that. So Ben Jerig. There's a nice long ridge that goes across there. And then all the way down. There's a solitary Monroe over there. I don't remember the name of it. It's not that long a walk, but it's very isolated from the rest. across to the end there, just to get more open view. I've just come to the most northern end of this Monroe. You can just see the cairn, just to get a panorama. We're looking out at a very remote part of the country. So 
for that one there with the light on it, the smaller one, I think that's stacked poly. That one there. Looks like the right shape for it. It's getting a bit dull. Looks like the forecast was correct. So we've got to go back down to the lock and and then up to Monroe number three straight ahead. And you follow that ridge and go down over the back there and up the other side. And that could well be Monroe number four, right in the center of the frame. There's a dip between the mountain in front of us and that top. So the time has just gone 12.30 little under, very little under five hours of walking to get to the halfway mark. But most of the ascent has been covered. Probably need to say that. Just retrace my steps back down. So we go this direction and then turn to the right. Don't know if it's going to be too clear where to turn to the right to get back on that path I came up on, but I'll just keep an eye out for it. A lot of stepping stones here, just walking across the rocks. There's a faint sign of a path here. So there's a wee bit down here, then turn right. And all the way up to that one over there. And now at least we're starting on the, the homeward bound journey. Still a fair way to go. Well, that makes it easier. And just as I made that previous video, I saw two cairns just slightly to the right. So these two cairns indicate the start of the path down. And if I head towards those guys, there's a real good chance that's the way the path is. I was following a clear path, it hit a patch of rocks and I'm really struggling to see where it comes out another end. It's not a real issue, we've just got to get down to the soggy bit down there. It doesn't really matter which way you go, as long as you go that way. I've made it down from the top. Looks like there's many different paths. I eventually got onto the main one. You retrace your steps back to where that little locking was and then to the little cairns. And at that point, we're gonna go right. Heading back to the two little cairns you can see just to the left of that locking over there. Once I get there, I'll fill up with water again. There's a bit of a stretch as you go up this Monroe, down up the second Monroe and then back round where there's not really any signs of streams on the map. So I'll refill at that locking. It's about one kilometre walk in distance to the top and about 110 or 115 metres of ascent. So it shouldn't be too difficult to get up to the next one. And it's not too windy at the moment. After that little excursion up those two Monroes and back at the path I started on. And the little cairn 
going to go to the right now. And like I say, I'll just fill up over there with water before going up onto Monroe number three. And Chelloch is still clear, but it's a bit grey and overcast over there. Definitely brighter. It's with patches of blue sky and some cumulus cloud. So I see a big cairn over there, so I thought I'd check the map. And if you get to that, you've gone slightly too far. The path actually just goes up here. There's a tiny little grouping of rocks there, just to give you an indication. But so, so when you see that in the distance, about 20 meters away, roughly, then you turn to your left and just head up here. Just saw the sunlight catching the ridge up to Ben Jerig with Anchelach behind it. The path up this one's a little bit faint. There's bits that are a bit boggier, but I think it's quite easy to follow the general, the general direction to the top. Just approaching the summit of Mial Nan Caprican. And the sun's coming out. Ben Jerig is directly over there. Looks like a lot of rain is over there. And that's kind of where I was planning to go initially. That's closer to sky over there. over the fisher field 6 looks like it's getting quite close. You can see Yellowpool in the distance. Stack Polly. It's quite nice over there. And I think that's the next top. Just there. I'm not going to stick around for very long, it's a long walk as it is. So we head off this direction and then we go down and up onto that one over there. Just looking across the Ben Jerig. You can get quite close to the edge here with a big cliff. So yeah, I want to be careful of that. I'm going to head west and see the view you can get from the edge before going round the corner. From that summit you want to be heading north. I'm heading slightly north northwest just to get to the edge here to see if I can get a better panorama across towards Alapool. Quite an unusual white seam or seam of white quartz. There's no real path here. You can see it over there in the grass, so that's what I'm heading for. It's too rocky to have a path more than tip. Once you reach this cairn, and if it's clear enough, you can see that pointy top over there directly ahead of it. You want to turn to the right, we've got about 300 metres to go in this direction. There's no clear path because it's just too rocky to wear a path into it. So we'll go along here a bit. I expect as normal there'll be a cairn at some point ahead that indicates the top of the path going down to the left. We'll see.
It's quite incredible that I'm still on the right path. Not that there's any path to see. But it's just a wee bit further on and then it'll start to bend to the left. Uh, the rain's caught up with me. It's just started. It's not heavy yet. So I think we're going down just this natural bit here that goes down to the left. Natural uh, descent. Yes, so I'm right at the spot on the map. According to, oh, there it is. I can see a cairn. I walk past it a wee bit. So I think you want to be looking out for this white quartz cairn. At this point, you want to turn left. Still not a clear sign of a path, but I'm sure once I start descending, I'll pick up the path. But yeah. I want to go down there and then up and over and you can see the summit cairn on the fourth and final Monroe of the day. And the rain's gone off. It's only on for about a minute. So I'm going to go around a little bit straight ahead there, a wee bit to the right, then it bends round. I can see a clear path going down there and you're just going to meander your way down, I think aiming around about the centre of the screen there. I can see signs of a muddy path going up there. So that looks like it goes up there, then you're onto, onto the big back of the mountain. So just make your way down here as safely as you can. As I come down, I can see more where the sort of footpath vaguely. I think we want to keep to the right more than sort of trying to go straight across. There's a drop there. Don't know how steep it is from here. Can't see yet. So we'll keep going. The path is definitely clearer and more consistent to follow at this point. I think it's going to go more around to there and then up the long slope rather than down as far as those gorges are. You can see like it looks like people have come down there but or maybe it's just deer and sheep. But I think we're going to go more round in a wide berth and that matches what I've got on the map. Yeah. Be nice to get to the top of there and all downhill back to the van. It's quarter past four, quite a long walk this one. You don't need to worry about water on this walk, it's everywhere. getting heavier. I'll walk on a wee bit and see how it goes. So you're going to see a path here and it might be inviting, oh you go I'll just go left or right, maybe that takes me up there. It doesn't. You actually go straight ahead and up what doesn't look like much of a path but that's the route up there. So I've just come down there, crossed that little path. After crossing the path, you go straight on, but then it starts to bend to the left. There's probably a few different tracks going up here. But I can see one straight ahead. So I just want to make my way up. The top's up there. So I'm going to head up here, follow this path as best I can. 
eventually I'll get to the top. Ah, the fourth and final Monroe for today. Fourth new Monroe of the day. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. I might add it in later. It's just too difficult. And the sun's out. Descent route is just back down here. So I'll go along here first. That first cairn over there was not the summit. I don't even think this is the summit. We'll touch it anyway, <laughs> just in case. Looking at the map and the GPS, that one over there is the summit, the wee tiny one. They all have great views. I just checked the OS maps and the detailed map for that, and it looks like the first cairn is a summit. Yeah. So I'll go with the first cairn. Nice in the sun, a bit windy. From here you want to head west and west and a little bit south of west. And it'll take you down onto that path that should be directly in the centre of the screen and then that just goes straight on and joins up with the path that I came in on. From there you turn right and it's a very easy stroll back down to the van. Very easy but there's still quite a distance to go. It's 3 p.m. There is nine kilometers back to the van, 900 meters of descent. The sun has come out. So you just drop down about 50 meters and you get out of the worst of the wind and it is really nice. Just check my position on the GPS and I'm coming down a little bit early on the left of where the path is. So I think the path goes sort of on along the ridge there. It makes no difference because this is going to cross over that path. Both of them go down to the left to that path that we saw from a distance. Just taking off some clothes, put my sun hat on. Yeah, the sun's really come out. So I've been contouring round the mountain back there as I came down on the path a little bit too early, a little bit too much on the left. I could have just tried to go all the way down and been able to pick the way down all the way down to the path. There's, there's a track down below. But I thought I'd just contour around and eventually I'm going to cut across the path I should have been on when it turned to the left and goes straight down the side of the mountain. It's about 100 metres away now. It's a bit windy here. Uh, I'll, I'll come across that path 
now number nine. So the path that's on the route description at the start would be the way I should have went. And I'll leave that with the right path. And now I'm probably getting very close to joining it. So I'll go down to go down to there. Then it's a straightforward walk out. So no matter which way you come down, you can see those two guys behind me are coming down a more direct route. You want to aim for this path here. There is a little tiny cairn here, so it looks like I did eventually get on the path, but there's not much of a path to be honest. But it's not steep. It was quite an easy descent on this path, so I should just be able to walk out. We'll join the path I was on on the way up. Like I say, we'll turn to the right. Probably about two hours walking time to get out from here. Back down to the main path in the cairn I pointed out this morning. It is 4 p.m. So if I can get back from here in an hour and a half, the total walk today will have taken 10 hours. I think it would make for a nice walk if you made your way up this bank here onto the ridge and then just walked along the ridge line there is that dry stone wall so you've got an easy guide to get you up to the top and I expect it would be quite an easy walk once you're actually on the ridge the other thing to note I think you could easily take a bike to the top of the forest and that would save you about 8 kilometres of a walk roughly I'll check it in detail on the OS map and I've probably already explained that in the description at the beginning when I take you through the route. Oh, a bit tired now. Almost back to the forest. It'll be a little bit cooler out of the sun. It's the first time today it's actually been quite warm. The wind chill was certainly keeping the temperature down. So hopefully that's the last GoPro battery change. Uh, I've no mobile signal so the OS maps can't accurately calculate the distance. I think it's going to be roughly five kilometers back to the car park from here. It is 4.30. Probably will take about an hour to get back. So that'll be 10 hours full round trip.
when you come to this junction, there are a couple of roads that we are actually following where, where that arrow is pointing. So we keep to the right. And I estimate it's about two kilometers from here back to the car park. So almost back to the van. Car parks just just where that white van is driving by, right about there. So we'll find out if I did upset somebody with my parking. If you made it this far, thank you for walking. <laughs> walking. Thank you for watching. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. Looking forward to getting back to the campsite and getting a shower, getting the dinner on, having a nice cold beer. So I'm planning to do another walk tomorrow. It'll be a shorter one. Hopefully the weather's decent somewhere, somewhere on the way home. Ah, the van's all good. So that was 42,000 steps. It's a one hour drive to the caravan pack at Kinloch here. And the time is 10 past five. So just a little bit, well, probably about nine and a half hours total walking time with stops and breaks, etc. Thank you for watching and bye for now.